Hey, g'day, it's Crazer, and welcome back to my shop. Now, this is part two of making a mid century modern style guitar pick table. Now, a guitar pick table is one that has a triangular top, the corners are usually rounded over, and the curves that connect those corners are usually asymmetric, so it doesn't have a symmetrical geometry. Now, in this episode, I want to do all of the finishing processes on this table. So I'm going to get it pulled apart and I'm going to sandblast and powder coat these steel legs. We'll get the fake laminate top put on this uh, piece of particle board. And then I'll get the aluminium edging put on this as well. Now if you didn't see episode one, there's a link up above there now and I'll put one in the description as well. And uh, I'll show you what the table looks like when it's completed and in the room. So uh, let's get this pulled apart and get busy. Now these legs are just made of uh, hot rolled steel and they've been bent and welded to give us this shape. And the first step before we powder coat is to get all of the oxide off the steel. So the sandblaster does this really well. I'm using a garnet abrasive and that puts a really nice texture on this that the powder coat sticks to really well. All right, they're looking really good now. They've got that uniform sandblasted finish all over. And the most important thing now is you wear gloves until you get the powder coat completed because you don't want to contaminate that nice clean surface with oily residue from your hands. Now that these parts are clean from the sandblasting process, we need to get the powder coat on as quickly as possible so there's no corrosion. And I had to think really carefully here about how I was going to get this part into my powder coat oven because it's just a standard domestic 600 millimeter wide oven. And the length of the part is such that it only just fits between the edge of the door and the back diagonal corner of the oven cavity. And it's not possible to hang this part vertically from any of these holes in this bracket here. And laying it flat on anything is going to leave a mark in the powder coat. So what I have done is I've drilled a hole in this end of the leg here. Now I did that on all three parts in the drill press with a spot drill. That'll be hidden, you won't see it later on. And what that means is that I can trap it between two points in this fixture. So down this end I've got a piece of all thread that's been ground to a point. And at this end I've got a threaded screw with a similar point on it. And I can just wind that up. And now I can rotate that part round while I get the powder coat on it. And then the whole assembly can go into the oven and I've checked and it does fit. <laughs> so um, I'll get the powder coat on this one and do it. And all three are the same. All right, I'm gonna try powder coating one of these now. I'm using a gloss black powder coat. And we're gonna have to sort of turn this a couple of times, get a full coverage on it. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, that's easier. Uh, 
Okay, that's ready for the oven. All right, uh, problem here is I've only got the one oven, I've only got the one fixture, so I'm going to have to take the part out of the oven and let it cool down a bit before I can change over the parts in the fixture and then put it back in the oven. So normally I would just hang a whole bunch of parts all in one go, but with this setup I'm just going to be a bit more patient. Okay, that's taken way longer than I thought it would to bring that part up to temperature, but it's had 10 minutes with the powder coat glossy, so I think it's ready to come out, but it's going to be tricky. Okay, that was fairly trouble free, but I need to let that cool down now before I can swap out the parts in the fixture. But uh, I won't show you the other two, they're all the same. I'm just getting ready to put the fake laminate top on this table. Now back in the mid-century modern period, a lot of these tables were finished with a product either called Formica, or here in Australia it was called Laminex. Now it's all basically the same thing, it's just a melamine sandwich. And the coatings and the colours on these uh, laminates were very distinctive back in that period. And the patterns uh, are really, really hard to get these days because they're just regarded as being old fashioned. There is a company that still stocks it, uh, but the minimum quantity is an 8 foot by 4 foot sheet and I just don't need that much. So what I'm going to do is to use a wallpaper. Now this particular pattern and colour is exactly the same as the fabric used on the lampshades in the same room. And we purchased this from a company called Spoonflower.com. They've got a website and you can scroll through all of their designs and you can filter them by period. So if you want Art Deco or Art Nouveau, you just put that in the search box and it'll pull up all the different patterns. And there are even different color combinations with exactly the same pattern. So uh, I'm going to use this and uh, I've got a centerline mark on here now. Now this top is not symmetrical so I've just chosen a midpoint on this curve here and the middle of this uh, back curve here. This edge will be up against the wall in the room. So this fence is set the same distance away from that line there. So on my roll of wallpaper which I've already cut, it's got one edge from the factory, which I think is this one. And I can line that up along that fence there to ensure that these uh, lines in the pattern at least sort of line up with the, the centre line of the table. Now all you need to do with the stuff is to wet the back. So I'm going to use a spray bottle and get a, like a, a coating of water on that so it starts to dissolve the glue. This is already pre-glued by the way. And then we can smooth that out on the surface, let it dry and then I'll trim it. Now I did try this out in a piece of scrap a while ago and it worked fine. But it was a lot smaller than this. So um, anything could go wrong here. Now the instructions say to moisten the whole of the back of the sheet with a roller, but this being an awkward shape and yeah, I, I think this is the best way. And they say to wait about uh, two or three minutes for the glue to activate. And that seems to be quite sticky and turning to a gel now. So the trick is to get this on without it buckling or curling over on itself. Right, see how we go.
Okay, um, I'm not convinced that's totally flat. Uh, it may change as the moisture evaporates out of that glue. So we're just going to leave this. I might trim this roughly to shape so I don't have all these flappy bits on the outside though. Alright, I guess we wait till tomorrow now and we'll see how that turns out. That's uh, dried overnight now and it feels great. It's really flat. So I think all those little lumps and bumps I felt in it yesterday were just the glue and now that that's set, it's pulled down flat. So I'll give this a trim and then we'll get a coat of sealer on this. So we're going to use a gloss nitrocellulose lacquer and that will give it that sort of shiny look that you used to see on the old Formica. Alright, that's great. Okay, I'm just going to spray on this 95% gloss nitrocellulose lacquer. That'll give us a nice shiny coating on that and it should dry really flat. Sort of got to get the light shining off it to see if you've got full coverage. I think that's pretty good. I'll let that dry a bit and then we'll come back and give it a slightly heavier coat. Okay, second coat, I'm just going to let that set completely now. That lac has had a chance to dry now and the surface finish on that has turned out exactly as I want it. It's got just the right amount of gloss without looking like a mirror. So I think that's worked really well. Let's have a look at the legs. These have turned out really good as well. I'm very happy about the gloss level on those. And being powder coat, this is uh, going to last forever. And I must say this fixture was a real bonus. Uh, being able to slide the whole unit into the oven meant that I didn't have to worry about touching any of the surfaces and potentially rubbing off that powder coat. So uh, I think that worked really well. And uh, the final step now is to be able to get this uh, aluminium edge onto the top. And this is the bit that I'm most nervous about. If I accidentally smear glue on the top of the table, well it's sort of game over really. Uh, so. I'm going to do a dry run. I'll put the band clamp back on this and just check the fit at the butt joint there. And if that's all good, we'll go ahead and I just need to think about the adhesive. I'm sort of having second thoughts about using a polyurethane adhesive. But uh, let me do the dry run I'll bring you back. Hey, got a new sticker. This one is from Nobby's Workshop. Now Nobby's in the UK, he's got a lovely little MyFit ML7R lathe and a mini mill and he sent me this beautiful handmade card as well, I think his uh, wife did this. Uh, handmade card and photography by Mrs Nobby, got some lovely vintage BA type spanners on there as well. So check him out, uh, here's a picture of his homepage and I'll put a link in the description and there's one up above there now as well. So if you're looking for some new content to watch, check him out. Just getting ready to bond that aluminium strip onto the edge of the table and I've decided to use this Sally's Liquid Nails. No, it's just a construction adhesive and it's not because of the strength, it's because I can clean this up with uh, turpentine. So if I accidentally smear it on the top, I can get it off. 
I would uh, love to use this stuff, the uh, polyurethane adhesive. Uh, this has got a you know habit of squeezing out through edges and joints and so on, and then setting as a really hard foam on the surface. And if that were to happen around the inside edge of the aluminium moulding, I, I think I'd have a tough time getting it off without damaging the top. So I'm going to put a thin bead around the edge, mainly on the edge where the joint will be. The other edges I'll just put a, you know, a few spots and uh, we'll try and get that uh, piece of aluminium on there without making a mess. So this uh, piece of rubber is just to protect the aluminium strip here from the back of the clamp. Otherwise it would just be metal on metal. And this piece of plywood here is going to go across that joint just to put extra pressure on that junction there. Okay, that's about as tight as I can get that. Sorry I didn't get it on camera. Uh, what I'll do now is it's going to go around underneath there. I did actually get some to squeeze out onto my hand. <laughs> so I've got to be really careful to clean up before I touch this. It seems like the joint has gone together really well here. So I'm going to leave this sit overnight and then we'll come back and check it tomorrow and we should be able to do the assembly. It's been in the clamp now for over 24 hours, so I'm just going to remove this to see what we've got. Yeah, got a little bit of glue squeezed out here, so I'm going to get a grey scotch pipe. I'm going to go around and clean all this up, and then we'll get the legs on and see what it's like assembled. The butt joint here has turned out pretty good. Happy with that. Yeah, it's all looking pretty good. Alrighty, I'm going to get this cleaned up and we'll see it assembled. Yeah, luckily that glue picked off there very easily may not be very clear on the camera but there is a bit of damage on the surface of this material when i purchased it it's just on a rack in a warehouse and uh, i'd say it's been mishandled at some point but i'll keep going with the scotch bright Crytek, see if i can get that a more uniform finish
Okay, finishing touch. I'm calling this finish now. Let's go and put it in the room, see how it looks. Okay, let's just go on a little walk into the corner of the room here, and this is where we have the table set up. And as you can see, it just fills the space between these two armchairs. And I've got the lava lamp set up and running on the table as well. And it just nicely fills the space between these two chairs. And there's not a lot of room here. And if we tried to use a square or a rectangular table between these two chairs, I just don't think it was going to fit. Now I've got a new clock on the wall about that, so let's have a look. Now I bought this clock from a company in the UK called Royal Enamel and the reason I bought it rather than trying to make it myself is it has a proper glass face and a bezel so the hands are fully enclosed and it's just a lovely colour and I love the, the numbering system or the numbered font that they would used on the face of the clock. Now later on I'll turn this into a full starburst clock that means adding some wooden points around the outside of the clock face itself. But that will be a future project. I've got just enough wood left over from making the bed head. So let's have a look at the bed head. Uh, there it is there and I've got the rocket lamp set up. And all of this was covered in a previous couple of episodes that I did uh, on furniture making. Now I've got some new artwork on the wall above there as well. And this corner of the room here is inappropriate. <laughs> so this silky oak dressing table is from a, a former era or previous era. It's more Victorian style. And what I want to do is replace this later on with something like a Parker Low Boy if I can find a good one. Even if I have to renovate it, that'll be fine. And then on the wall above that, I want to have a little uh, shadow box with a few little knickknacks that I've collected over the years and that will just finish off that wall there. So that's it, that's the table finished. I reckon it looks great. And uh, what I want to do now is I want to finish up. I want to show you some of the wildflowers that are in our garden at present. So in Australia, about this time of the year, uh, sort of late winter, all of the native shrubs come out in this uh, beautiful display of flowers. So I'll have a look around, I'll tell you which species we're looking at. But for now, thanks for watching today and I'll catch you on a future episode. President signing out. Cheers.